You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What is good, folks? Um, we're here today to talk a little KU Mizzou, both sports, football, basketball. But before we get into that, I want to talk about our title sponsor, M Prize Bank. Anthony Bax, my friend, have you heard of them before? I have, Brayden. Uh, did you know with M Prize Bank, you can open an account in less than five minutes? Savings just start there. Emprise is a trusted partner with a variety of products and services to help you achieve your goals. Don't be tethered to a brick building. Start a meaningful relationship with a bank that has your best in mind. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, super excited about this episode today. Our brother, um, our first producer in KC, under KCSN. Um, I love him. Huge fan of him. He's one of my favorite humans in the world. Not just saying that. He's great. Great at what he does. He's helped us a lot. Um, Mizzou guy, we'll let him get away with that, I guess. But um, our boy, Tucker Franklin, the old TikTok star himself, how we doing? Man, I'm doing great. I'm glad I'm now. I'm on the show. I've been in the background of the show several times um, mm -hmm. through your national championship runs and your uh, six, five and oh starts and uh, had to deal with all of it as a Mizzou fan. So I'm glad I now get to voice my opinions, not only on the Hawks, but also on the Tigers because I got big, big matchups coming on and some, some, some controversy to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of that, you were very um, passionate about this on Twitter. Just from a Mizzou, Mizzou standpoint, I know KU fans had their takes. Mizzou kind of defended what Mizzou – I mean, it came out, obviously, for people that don't know, that Mizzou didn't want to play Kansas um, in the Liberty Bowl, which no one knows if that's true or not. Obviously, Drinkwitz came out, posted the picture of the stadium in Memphis saying we'll play them anywhere. Um, AB, obviously, I want to get your takes from a KU perspective – um, so yeah, you go first talking about just the KU Mizzou bowl game fiasco. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's really like hard for me to not pick and choose, but I feel like if I call Mizzou hypocrites, they're going to call KU fans hypocrites. Like now you want to play us. Oh, you did this for eight years. I think all of us here have been like very strong and adamant on the take that KU and Mizzou should have never stopped playing regardless of which conference they were in. Like it wasn't the fans decision to not play the game. What pissed me off about when this announcement came out is everything word for word. Drinkwitz said it in a press where I tweeted the clip. It's like everything Bill said, and maybe Drinkwitz, he's, he's the kind of guy who wouldn't surprise me if he's trolling everybody and just took an old Bill self quote from like five years ago and put that into his words for Mizzou. But it's just like all the rallying around it, it just was so bizarre to me. And then the reasonings they wanted to play before Christmas or we're not scared to play a six and six team. You're not excited to play a six and six team. You're playing seven and five Wake Forest. Like that's not any better in the chameleon bowl or whatever the hell it is. It just it was very annoying, but also kind of very funny because I feel like that storyline that we've had attached to us for almost a decade now is kind of just gone because both you know, schools can say that you guys backed out of something. So it feels like that's just swept under the rug now and we can get back to playing each other. And then, yeah, yeah Tucker, obviously I want to hear your point from a Mizzou standpoint. I think you were super passionate about it. Um, obviously, Bill Self for a while said we don't need to play Mizzou. Like, basically, Mizzou needs us. We don't need mm -hmm. them. So I don't – kind of wanted to know how you felt just – on Bill's thoughts throughout throughout the years on not playing Mizzou, and then I guess obviously just Mizzou and this whole bowl game situation. So it's interesting, right? I know a lot of a lot of Mizzou fans did bring that up, the whole Bill self comments in whatever year that was, twenty twelve, um, about not playing, and people were saying, "Well, he said it on the record. This is just a source of dodge. It it doesn't matter when it's out there; it's out there. It doesn't matter who said it or where they said it or when they said it." Um, but I, I, I agree with you, AB, in, in thinking that, I mean, I never wanted to stop playing Kansas. I never wanted to see that go away. If it was up to me, I would have, they would still be playing in both sports. Um, and, and I think my first reaction when it, when it came out, actually, I got a text from Matt Lane of the KC laboratory. He sent me the screenshot before he tweeted it out and he said, Oh no. And I saw that and I read it and I was like, no, <laughs> going to be, going to be a long day. Um, yeah. because it's embarrassing. It's a bad look, uh, whether regardless if it's true or if it's not, if it gets put on the internet, people are going to run with it. People are going to take it regardless of if it's true or not. Um, do I think that there is possibly some truth to it? Yeah. I mean, I went on uh, the Mizzou that's who podcast literally two weeks ago and said, I don't want to play Kansas if I'm Missouri, because 
if a six and six ten Kansas team beats a six and six Missouri team, that's a bad look for Missouri, right? I know you know Kansas quality football team. I will say that right now, they're a quality football yeah. team on the up and up. Um, and I think some people, some Kansas fans, took exception to my tweet of saying that Mizzou is supposed to beat Kansas, but historically, Mizzou runs the football rivalry. Like that's mm-hmm. not that's not controversial to say. Um, so if you're an outsider looking in and you see that Kansas beats Missouri in a football game, you're saying, "Oh, that probably wasn't supposed to happen." Uh, regardless of whatever context that you have, I still think Mizzou probably would have been favored in that game um, by yeah, a point, point and sure. a half, maybe. So yeah, um, it's, it's, Arkansas, it's really interesting. I think what's uh, what's the spread for the Arkansas game early? AB? I saw it. At, I saw it at four today. Um, and what so Arkansas that's... was like a two and a half point favorite at Mizzou. A yeah, few weeks ago. Mizzou looked. I thought um, Brady Cook looked really good against against Arkansas at home to clinch bowl eligibility. Um, and I was going to say too, when we started the show, we'll get to that Arkansas KU bowl matchup. I kind of just wanted to do it with Bry, just because he's a diehard KU football fan. He deserves to be on here. So we're going to do another show um, talking about that bowl game. But yeah, with Mizzou, it's like I get I got what you were saying about the lose lose situation, just because KU been one of the worst power fives in the country since 2009. So it's like, we're happy with a bowl game. And I think people, if KU lost, they'd just be like, so what? We made a bowl, making a lot of progress. Mizzou's obviously an SEC school. So people would expect them to win that game. And KU would get their jokes in. K-State would get their jokes in if Mizzou lost. But I kind of, I don't know, with Bill Self's comments for a long time, I kind of wanted to touch on that just because Mizzou fans were obviously super passionate about it once this stuff came out too, just because you can kind of compare the two. I I personally kind of agree with Bill, even though I wanted to play Mizzou, and I think most fans wanted to play. It's just, I guess, Mizzou left the conference. They went to the SEC. I think if KU would have done that same thing, I think I would have understand Mizzou's point about not playing us just because they left, and they're part of that rivalry. So I'm not sure how you guys feel about that. I know Bill – and that was definitely the thing, too, is that was a lose-lose for KU. You lose to Mizzou, you're going to get a ton of shit, especially at the field house. But if you win, that's what you expect. So – I don't know. I just – Bill with Bill's comments, I kind of agree. Um, I know Mizzou fans wanted to keep it going. And as fans, like even going into the game last year at Allen Fieldhouse, I don't know how you guys felt going into that. I know Mizzou wasn't very good last year. They're better this year. They're undefeated. But I feel like I don't, I don't have the same – the rivalry doesn't have the same juice to it. So I don't know. It's just not – it's not as fun as me. I don't get as amped up, but – I don't know. How do you guys feel going into these matchups? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I got pretty juiced for it last year. Uh, I don't know if that's because it was like the first time in however many years, but and we got juiced for a scrimmage five years ago when KU and Mizzou right. played against each other. And, Porter Jr. Yeah, put up all that money, but I don't know. I mean, when, when you stop playing each other for so long, I think you do lose a little bit of juice, but I mean, what? We've got five more games of basketball coming up in the next five years, and then Football series starts in either 25 or 26, I want to say. So, 26. Yeah. 26, Leipold, yeah. Leipold might have KU as a playoff contender by then. <laughs> 12 team at that point. That's what I was mm-hmm. saying. With Mizzou, you just got to get top 12. Listen. Easy money. Could happen, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. How do you feel no, about the matchups? I think I think it's interesting. Um, I, w- I want to still talk uh, on, on Bill Self's comments because that was brought up a lot mm-hmm. um, of like – Missouri fans saying, well, they did it so we can do it. And I don't like that reasoning, right? Yeah. It, it feels it feels childish. I feel like this whole thing is kind of childish, right? Of just like, we don't want to play you. Well, well, well I'm going to take my ball and go home, and we don't want to play in Memphis. We don't want to play before Christmas. By the way, ne- <laughs> never have heard that like as, an ex- oh, as no. something used until like this year. What about as, Missouri like, oh, basketball playing on the same day, which they did last year? I think that that's a kind of a load of load of crap too, with uh, them playing K- Kentucky at home. They're like, oh well, it's for playing Kentucky at home. Game. You get smoked, dude. Um, <laughs> I, I, this is this is matter of fact, but um, I I don't know. I just felt like it was the excuse train rolling into the station, right from from the very jump of that report coming out. It was, well, we don't want this. Well, we don't want that. Well, well, they did this. They did that, and. And I just wasn't like with that, right? I was like, yeah, this is a bad look. Um, what, regardless if it's true or not, which I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Do I think Mizzou wanted to play in the Liberty Bowl? No, I don't think it was very high on their list. 
of especially hearing what Drinkwitz had to say about how much he values pre-Christmas bowls, um, which is incredible. I've never heard of somebody valuing a pre-Christmas bowl as much as he does. Um, that's what makes it feel like they definitely were dodging. <laughs> right. I think I think that that's fair to feel that way. And and you know, Desiree Reed Francois, our Missouri's athletic director, went on with uh, Gabe Diarman and said that no, we weren't. We we didn't say we didn't want to play KU and. I just feel like maybe they didn't say they didn't want to play KU, but they said no to every situation where they could play KU, right? So yeah. I think that that's kind of the situation. Um, I've heard that they also didn't want to play in the Texas Bowl either. So it's one of those things of like you didn't you didn't directly say it, but like you said it with your actions. Do I think that uh, Brett McMurphy made it up? No, I think Brett McMurphy is saying what a source told him. Mm-hmm. No, I think a lot. I think a lot of Mizzou fans were like, "Well, Brett McMurphy made this up. Brett McMurphy's wrong," and it's not Brett who made it up. Who Brett is just saying what somebody told him, right? Mm-hmm. He's like a shoot the messenger situation. And then he had Mizzou fans going after him after they get named to the Gasparilla Bowl, saying like, "Oh, you told us we we're going to play East Carolina in the Birmingham Bowl." Yeah, he said. Yeah, he said that on f- Friday before the championship games were played, and so Missouri fans are going after him for that. Is it's all very bizarre and very weird. One of those things where um, it was an it was an embarrassing day on Friday to be a Missouri fan because it was like, man, you're you're dodging your rival, and it's just like the only thing you could say was like, I mean, I guess so. I guess that's what it seems like. But um, yeah, dude, it's bizarre. It was a very bizarre day on Friday. I think. Can, yeah. can I ask you this? The follow up to basically this whole conversation, and I guess yeah. either of you guys can answer it. Probably more Tuck though. I don't know exactly how the bowl process works but like how much say does like mizzou have on where they get the what were they finished like ninth or tenth in the sec like right why i just never knew teams had that much control over which bowl game they played in because it felt like ku and obviously we don't have much bowl experience in our adult lives so maybe i'm just misremembering but like I don't think KU really had, we really, really, really want to go here. We're not going here. It was just like, okay, put us wherever we'll play. And I've never, I don't know if I'm just missing something. I don't know if I've ever heard of a school just pick where they want, which bowl game they want to go to, unless it's like the one seed in the playoff, choosing which stadium they want to play their first playoff game in. Right. I I do think that that whole process is kind of changing. It does vary from conference to conference. The SEC, they do take a preference list um, because, so this is like the second year Mizzou's, or I think it's really third year that Mizzou's been eligible for a bowl. The first one, I think it was like the Holiday Bowl, and they didn't play uh, Iowa. No, it was Music City Bowl. They didn't play Iowa in because COVID. Um, but if you look at like last year's bowl with Mizzou, I can promise you they didn't say we want to be in the Armed Forces Bowl and play Army. Um, so I think what it is is like, the SEC has their six allotted bowl games of like the SEC plays the Big 12, they play the Pac-12, they play the ACC. Mm-hmm. And I think the the SEC chooses those six schools. After that, because um, they have more than six bowl eligible teams, uh, they, they then take the preference sheet of where they would want to go as a pool team. Um, and I, I do think it's interesting that it's funny that a six and six Missouri team is trying to decide who they play and where they play. Right. Like that irony is not lost on me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, what gives you the right to choose that? Um, but yeah, it, it is a very interesting process and I've learned more about the bull process in these last five days than I ever knew leading up to it. Also the sec splits all bull money evenly um, between all their teams. So they just pull all the money together. A real socialist system, the SEC is, is they pull all their money together and then, then redistribute it evenly. Um, so I know a lot of people were saying, like, well, how come you wouldn't want the Liberty Bowl with a $6 million payout? At $6 million doesn't really hit the Missouri directly. So that was another thing that was a that was something that was brought up. Um, but it is really interesting, the, just the whole selection process, and that I didn't know that teams could submit a preference sheet, and I don't know – how much the preference she really plays into the selection, if that makes sense. Um, I know that apparently Drinkwitz loves to play before Christmas. Um, so that <laughs> he, he got that to, he got that to go for him. He also said in his press conference that he's like, Hey, if I had to choose a bowl game to play and it'd be the national championship, I was just <laughs> kind of rolled my eyes at that one. Um, Notably after just, Christmas, by the way. Yeah, it is after Christmas. <laughs> I hope he knows that he's got to, got to have the kids stay on campus, but I do <clears throat> I guess I somewhat get his reasoning, right? As, as much as like, I see where he's coming from. Do I agree with it? Not necessarily, 
But in the age of like opt outs with bowl games, especially if you can keep if you can tell a kid like, hey, we'll be done by Christmas. You can go home like at, for Christmas. I guess it's a pull for kids to play. Um, but if you're playing in a good bowl game, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And I mean, spending Christmas with your family is a whole lot better than spending Christmas in a hotel in Birmingham. Right. Um, I would much rather uh, do that. And I think that was kind of the big thing with the Birmingham Bowl, the Liberty Bowl as well. Um, and I think that Drinkwood said one of the big things about the Gasparilla Bowls is in Tampa. And he loves Tampa, went on a tangent of like where he likes to eat in, in there. And he's like, I'd much rather be. He said something like, Drinkwoods can't help himself but to be a smart ass. Right. I'm sure you guys have known that by now. Um, he got shots in on KU the other day. He just said, I'm sure the bull process has changed in 15 years or some shit like that. But he he can't help himself sometimes just to be a smart ass. And like that's kind of frustrating as like a Missouri fan of yours. Like, dude, will you just win some football games before you're a smart ass for a little bit? Um, yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> was fresh uh, off rocking, the helicopter. He's a stud. Rocking the bow tie at the uh, Pinkle induction. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think that that was kind of a frustrating part where he's just like, yeah, if I had to choose, I'd choose a national championship. Uh, we're going to go to Tampa. Tampa's a lot better. It's a lot better to be in in December than it is to be in Memphis. And it's just like, yeah. Dude, you can just like chill for five minutes, okay? Um, just let just let the dust settle a little bit before you start going in on you know another school. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, th- I think that's kind of me. For me, I was just I was just frustrated and like disappointed and embarrassed with like the whole thing. I know a lot of Mizzou fans came out and just like immediately defended Mizzou and defended like the actions of the report and like calling it like fake and stuff like that. I, I don't. Know. That's kind of what I don't get either. Is it's not like it's a massive game. And like we just right. said, KU, KU, Mizzou are pl- actively playing right now in basketball. They're going to be playing in 2025 in football. So I partly don't really even believe McMurphy's report because I don't. What would be the point of Mizzou dodging KU in a bowl game? It's not like it's a a big time bowl game like a Cotton Bowl or a Sugar Bowl or something crazy like that. It's the two teams that are six and six. They're playing in basketball. They're going to be playing in football soon and. But if they did dodge, that's why I'm frustrated because bowl games to me, like they've just lost a ton of juice. Obviously, a lot of guys sit out. Arkansas's best player on defense is sitting out against us. Going to be probably he's going to go early in the draft. Um, Like, to be honest, am I crazy amped, super excited for this bowl game? Not really, even though we haven't been in 14 years. Arkansas fans are going to travel. Our fans are going to travel. It should be excited. But. I can't imagine how much money Memphis would have generated just from KU Mizzou being there. It would have been electric in the stadium. There would have been fist fights. There would have been, I mean, I can't even imagine like that, that rivalry is crazy. Even just we'll get in the basketball game soon, but Gary yeah. beat or for KU sports wrote an article today, or he, he might be on KC star. I forget where he's at now, but he wrote an article a day just about the antlers in Columbia. And it just brought back that hatred for Mizzou. And that's what I was going to say. I said earlier, I don't get that juice about these games. And I read that today and I was like, damn, I remember why I hate Mizzou fans. And so I think that bowl game would have been awesome. Part of me, a lot of me doesn't believe that Mizzou was dodging it. I just don't know why they would. I understand losing in a bowl game would suck, yeah. but is it really the end of the world? Like there's going to be guys probably sitting out for Mizzou. I would for guess sure. like, is it really the end of the world losing a bowl game as a six and six team? Mizzou has had nine guys in the transfer report already. They had two in the middle of the year, seven after the season got done, and they also have their Martez Manuel, who's one of their uh, defensive backs. He's sitting out because he's going to pursue the draft. Isaiah McGuire also sitting out, but he's going to pursue the draft. Um, I do think it's one of those situations. Um, I don't know if Mizzou is necessarily dodging KU, uh, but I think it was, like I said, I think it's one of those things where uh, Mizzou put that they didn't want to play in any circumstances where they could play KU and that might have been reported as, hey, it looks like they don't want to play KU. One of those situations. I do think the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? I don't think that, like, Mizzou absolutely was dodging Kansas and didn't want to play them. And I don't think that, like, it was made up, right? I think that Missouri's preference sheet of where they wanted to play didn't align with anything that could match them up with KU. So it was taken as they don't want to play KU. They yeah. should have just – whoever selects it should have just done it anyways. Just For sure, like, I can't uh, imagine sure. how much the Liberty Bowl wanted that matchup. I mean, you saw it mocked. I saw it mocked when you guys were four and six, and I was telling yeah. people you guys have an easy win coming up, and then you have Arkansas a rivalry at home. And I thought Mizzou could get to six and six. They did. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't really think Mizzou is dodging. McMurphy has good sources, so that's why I think a lot of people believed it. 
Um, it would have been electric. We don't get it. I just feel like there could be way worse scenarios for K for Mizzou. We could right. play them in like a randomly a Sweet 16 or Elite Eight or something like that or a bigger bowl game. I don't know. I just I don't think it would have been that heartbreaking for Mizzou. You as fans, right. you would have been pissed, and everyone wants to win the bowl game, but I just don't. I don't think Mizzou was necessarily dodging. So I kind of side with you. I just really wanted the matchup and talked about it for like a month. You yeah. say that though, but like, I mean. You know how we are on Twitter.com and on this podcast. You know, we, and we don't play again for four or five years, so that's all we would have been talking about for ever. Yeah. I will say the last thing I got on kind of like the Liberty Bowl as a whole, uh, Arkansas is the highest attending uh, fan base for the Liberty Bowl. I also think that that was a very, um, a very large factor in the Liberty Bowl's selection of Arkansas. Now, I don't know how that high Missouri – regardless. Yeah, I don't know how high up Missouri was on that list, especially with being like the SEC already having Arkansas and them having such a good relationship with the Liberty Bowl. I, I don't know if how realistic that would have been regardless, right? Um, but I do think that that's a huge factor for the Liberty Bowl because it's like four hours away from Memphis, Fayetteville mm-hmm. is. Um, it's very close. So I think that that was, that was a big factor in the choosing as well. Yeah, it'll be a good environment regardless. I oh, yeah. out, Outside game, of the... Playoff and the New Year's Six, is it probably going to be one of the most attended bowl games, I would say? Just I wild mean, when we're talking about KU football fans, but like, yeah, they're right. going to show out first time. It's only what seven hours from here, if that. Yeah, it's and we'd be juiced. How, and like Tuck said with Arkansas, I mean, it's going to be packed out and hotels going to make money, bars going to make money. It's going to be great. Yeah, you can drive to it. That's big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And KU's been obviously hungry to make a bowl game since 2009. We'll be playing Arkansas – or since 2008, we haven't been to a bowl game. So, Arkansas in Memphis, KU fans obviously make it out there. I don't have any doubts KU fans will make it. Like I said, it's been 14 years. Arkansas fans will show up, so our fans need to show up. But let's talk about our teams actually playing each other. Saturday in Columbia, um, KU Hoops goes into Columbia. Um, I've been researching uh, Mizzou all day, looking at their squad, and they just fascinate me. And, A.B., I think you'll love this, um, and maybe you'll hate it a little bit, but I'm going to give you some Ken Palm numbers on Mizzou. Mm -hmm. Looked at their adjusted tempo. They're fourth in the country. They play super quick. Um, Their offense, adjusted offense, is 12th in the country. And then I watched watched Mizzou against Wichita State, went into overtime. Mizzou came back late. Um, I had money on Mizzou that night. They won me a little bread. So I'm not sure – I wanted to, Tucker, this is kind of why I wanted to talk to you about Mizzou is I'm not sure how to feel about them defensively. They're 121st um, on Ken Palm. And so I looked at them. I've looked at some of the numbers they've given up to teams this year. They gave up 89 to SEMO last game, which is crazy. Um, and, th- and I'm saying this too because this could have to do with the tempo. They're going to play quick. Other teams might play quick at them also. One of the quickest teams in the country in tempo. Um, they gave up 91 to Southern Indiana. Um Penn put up 85, and then Southern Illinois Edwardsville put up 80. So they've been in some high-scoring games. Um, kind of just wanted to talk about – yeah, so just touch on their defense for a little bit and what you've seen, and then obviously they they can score it, they can fill it up, um, and they play quick. They do, and I think that's been the big thing about this uh, Dennis Gates-led team. He brought in a lot of guys with him. Um, Cleveland State was a respectable program. Um, a couple years ago, I believe they made the tournament in 2020. They might have just missed out um, in, in – I can't remember the situation, uh, but I think they just missed out in, in his final year there. Cleveland State brought some guys over with him, got a big uh, guard, or guard who was a transfer uh, from Clemson, Nick Honor, a uh, guy who comes in and provides some of that veteran ball handling experience at the Division One level. Uh, I think the biggest problem with the team coming into it is we didn't know how these guys were going to play at the Division One level, right? You had a lot of guys who were playing uh, JUCO, um, a division down, uh, a mid-major level who weren't playing uh, a, a t- an SEC schedule like Mizzou's about to run into. Now, if you look at Mizzou's schedule, I know that obviously this isn't a Mizzou basketball podcast, but they, they're about to hit an absolute gauntlet. They've got Kansas this week, um, and then they hit uh, UCF. Fine, they can win that game. Uh, Illinois and Kentucky and Arkansas. So they and they're it's they, they started their conference. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it, they're about to hit a brutal stretch of, of a. All right, this is what big boy basketball is now. Like this is what uh, you're up at this this level. Let's see how you can play it. Mizzou up until now hasn't really had that test. 
Biggest test came against Wichita State where they did beat them in overtime. Um, Wichita State's cu- suffered a couple of tough losses, even to Kansas State, too. They took a tough loss, too, um, where Kansas State came back and won. But I-, I do think that this team can score the basketball. You look at some of the numbers, too, um, of just, like, how many three-pointers the other team has made is kind of incredible when you're looking at some of these some of these scores. I know the first game of the season, Southern Indiana hung in there, 91-97. I believe Southern Indiana made uh, close to, like, 23s or something. Like it, it was insane. Like they shot lights out and, and they've had teams shoot lights out against them. So then you start to wonder, okay, is this a defensive trend where they can't get out and guard, you know, past the three point line have yet to really see that. I just, I think they've just had teams shoot really well against them from beyond the arc and Missouri is a better three point shooting team than they were last a season ago. Um, don't get it wrong. Mizzou was awful last year. Like Mizzou was a very bad basketball team. Um, and I, I'm confident of where, or I'm, I'm encouraged where the direction of this team is going. I'm still a little hesitant though. Like I, I do think that they're a good basketball team. We just haven't seen them do it against a level like Kansas or like even, yeah. you know, UCF or Illinois and, you know, Arkansas, like they're about to hit a really tough schedule. The SEC is tough, right? The, the, it's pretty top heavy. But it's a tough conference. It's no, it's no Big Twelve, but it's a tough basketball conference, a respectable one, where you got some top ten teams in there. I, it, it, I'm going to be curious to see how they how they really respond in this Kansas game, and if they can hang in there, that's probably going to be a lot of confidence for them moving forward. This is this is a team with a lot of transfers on it, a lot of new faces, um, and, and a lot of guys who haven't played together before these nine games this season. So yeah, I mean, and that's that it, might be the scary strong. thing too, though. Is Mizzou's yeah. nine and zero with a bunch of new faces? They're trying to mesh. They haven't bought in defensively probably yet, but they can score with anyone in the country, it seems like. I mean, top 12 defense. I mean, it's not – Ken Palm doesn't put the teams that they play into consideration, right? It's just the metrics That's, and stuff like that. Yeah. Like they're, they're their 12th-ranked mm-hmm. offense in the country. That's no joke. They play super quick. And I think it's a fascinating matchup because Mizzou, the tallest guy they start is 6'7". I was going over there starting five. Um, Des Moines Hodge, um, 17 points a night. Kobe Brown, 14 a night. Noah Carter, 12 a night. Um, and then DeAndre Golston uh, starts for them. And then Nick Honor. And then they got Sean East off the bench, um, who's averaging 10 a game, but his last two he's had 21 and 17. So he comes in uh, comes in off the bench, fills it up. Um, Des Moines Hodge, 40% from three. Kobe Brown, 37. Noah Carter, 36. Nick Honor, 44. So they got guys that can shoot it. They can score. And the reason it fascinates me is because KU – um, KU can't shoot it very well right now. And KU also doesn't start anyone that's super tall. So it's going to be our tallest guy is going to be six, eight KJ Adams. So they kind of match up, um, I guess from a height standpoint, but you've said teams have been hitting threes. KU hasn't really shot it particularly well. Jalen hasn't shot it well yet. Grady Dick obviously has, but McCuller, he was great last game. He hasn't shot it too well. So we don't have too many shooters as of now. I think potentially we could, um, with Joe Yesfu off the bench, but, it's a fascinating matchup to me. Like I said, from a height standpoint, you guys can score. Um, we haven't been great defensively yet, as great as I thought, but I think we're up there Ken Palm wise. So excited about the matchup. Um, and you guys, I think you guys are electric scoring it. So that's how I feel. I I haven't watched Mizzou one time this year. So I, I'm going, and I honestly, Tucker, I told Brayden earlier, not going to be able to watch it on Saturday either. Um, mm. But I don't know, man. I, I wasn't worried about this game at all. And then you check Ken Palm, Braden. I don't know if you saw the number. It's like minus three. Like KU's going to yeah. be a three or four point favorite on Saturday. Hostile environment. Very yeah. easily a game that they could lose. Like that happens every single night in college basketball. Um, so, yeah. It, but at the end of the day, it's cool because it'll feel, it'll feel like the game means something. I think that was part of yeah. it last year when KU was a 25, 30 point favorite and won by 40 points and put up a hundred and Chris Tian's out there making threes and Christian Brown's taking everything personally. And it's just, it was fun for us, but it didn't feel fun because it was a hated rival. It felt fun because this is a brutal shit pumping happening in Lawrence, Kansas right now. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm excited to like, see how it unfolds, I guess. Uh, one number and Tuck, you mentioned it. Mizzou hadn't played much. I think they're 358th right now in strength of schedule um, mm-hmm. out of 362, 65, whatever it is. Um, but you're going to learn a lot about them the next month. That road that you said is That's unbelievable. three in a row. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, in four out of five, if you take UCF out, which 
which you see Big 12 school. program. Oh, heard Taco Falls coming back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I genuinely have. going to struggle with his size. Yeah. Well, that's what we thought in 2012 too. And then talk, talk to me about the matchup and how you're just feeling in general. I think I think that for this matchup, there's nothing for Missouri to lose, right? Like, I think this is it's almost the reverse, right, of the bowl game situation. Missouri's got nothing to lose in this circumstance. They lose to Kansas. Yep, you were supposed to lose to the number, what do you guys, six team in the country right now. Three, six. Um, number six team in the country. That's what you're supposed to do. You're a, you're a, you're a team full of JUCO transfers. And and uh, mid majors, yeah, you coach. lose with a first year coach. That's what you do. They've got a legit shot to go out and maybe shock some people and 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 do something special. Listen, I think it's a win if they keep it close. That's probably blasphemous for me to say that, right? As a Missouri fan, uh, I know Missouri fans are probably not listening to this podcast right now, uh, but Missouri fans, if they do hear this, they're like, "Well, you're supposed to say you think you can win every game." I think it's a win if they keep it close. I really do. Um, if if it's a little bit, if it's more respectable than the than the absolute pumping that they took in Allen Fieldhouse, uh, where I left at halftime, and I knew that it wasn't going to get any closer, and I drove back to Kansas City from Lawrence, Kansas, um, I I just think that I'm excited for it to get to Missouri. Now this place has been uh, sold out. I was looking at tickets up to like $300 for the upper deck. It's going to be an expensive game to go to if you do want to go to it. I think what I'm so excited about is, you know, I'm sure that there was a buzz around Lawrence when that game was back. That, that crowd was packed. It crowd it was. was pumped up. Um, and like that, there was no empty seat. In there. Ain't no seats in there. Uh, I'll say that. Um, That's every but- game though, Tucker. I'm not used to that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do love it though. Kansas fans are always very quick to, uh, point out that Mizzou seats are gold um, in their arena. They're like, oh, look at all those Mizzou fans wearing gold. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Uh, whenever there's a clip, there's like, wow, a lot of Mizzou fans wearing gold today. Um, I don't know why the Missouri Athletic Department decided to choose gold to be the seat color. They probably should have chose something a little, you know. It's like club level at Arrowhead. God, dude, I don't know why they did that. Um, but it just looks bad when you're playing like SEMO and there's 14 people in the crowd. Um, but – Nevertheless, what I think what Mizzou has done really well, and give uh, Desiree, Desiree Reed Francois the credit for this, students get – mouthful, right? Uh, students get uh, priority <laughs> tickets for case, for the KU game if they were at all of the non-con games before that. I love that. Uh, the K-State so style. They, yep. So they did it. But if you were at all those games, you get, you get first priority. Um, and they've caused some good environments uh, for, the, for the team. So – um, hopefully I'm, I'm really excited just to see, you know, kind of Columbia and the Mizzou fan base as a whole kind of get back up for a game where they might have a chance. And, and if they show up, they might, it might be a difference maker, right? If there's a lot of Mizzou fans in there, if there's a ton of Mizzou fans in there, that could be a difference maker just playing at home. You know, I mean, I don't like to believe in, in home field advantage, but like in college basketball, in college sports, mm-hmm. it's such a huge factor. Like I, I don't think it's a big deal in, uh, the NFL or when you're talking about I think, NBA it, I think basketball like is the biggest by far. I do. I do. I do think college I think basketball it sways is the, the refs one. a lot. I think it sparks a ton of runs. Like, you know how many calls we get at Allen Fieldhouse. Oh yeah. Like I think the crowd has a lot to do with that. We spark runs. We, we literally don't lose there. Like if you come to, you can't, you said you, you can't expect to beat, beat KU. If you're Mizzou Saturday, you can't expect anyone in the country to beat KU when they're at Allen Fieldhouse. Right. Yeah. Eight on five, baby. Oh, uh, <laughs> is this the biggest Mizzou home basketball game since when? Uh, since yeah, the last time. Does it go back to Kansas. KU? Yeah, yeah, I think it's since, probably since the last time. Mizzou hasn't been very good. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. Mizzou hasn't oh, very, been, been very bad. good in, uh, in basketball since then. Do so, those Kentucky games get riled up, though? Like, especially when Kentucky's super good. As, were there any years where Mizzou, I mean, I know a few years ago you guys were at eight or nine seed because we were hoping for that one eight KU Mizzou. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like when you guys are bubble team or even just, you know, pretty average, does it get juice for Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, whoever coming into town, or is it just strictly, so. uh, we show up when KU plays and after that it's 60% full at best. I, that's not a I shot. I'm just so. genuinely yeah, curious no. of the, like the environment that it's going to be on Saturday more than anything. Probably. I think I do. I do think that it's really hard. We had this conversation. I probably, I think I've had this conversation a lot with people just kind of about, Columbia as a whole with a lot of their alumni being in Kansas City, 
St. Louis, right? And it being in the middle, that's a two hour drive from both of those places, right? So you're talking about making a whole night out of a middle of the week game um, where you have to drive there and back. So like, that's tough. And, and I think that the big part about like the support around Mizzou basketball is that is like, they play in the middle of the week, the Saturday games, you know, that's not an excuse. They don't show up even then uh, for the Saturday games. But I just think the buzz around the program right now is probably as high as it's been. Oh boy. Probably since Michael Porter jr. Um, it's which that year, actually they lost to Florida state which Dennis Gates was on that staff, uh, fun fact, and uh, C.Y. Young. So I, I do think the buzz is, is at the highest it's been since Michael Porter Jr. in his 14 minutes that he played um, in a Missouri basketball uniform that we will always claim forever that Missouri or Michael Porter Jr. played for Missouri. But um, nevertheless, I do think that um, that was probably the last time so, okay, I do think I'm going to amend my first answer to your question then, uh, A.B. I think it was the Iowa State game. It was a non-conference game. Michael Porter Jr. was supposed to be playing in his first, like, big non-conference game, uh, and he hurt his back within the first, like, four minutes. That was probably the most up that that crowd has been since leaving the Big 12. And I, I, I can't really recall another time that they were that excited. I was just – you talked about 2012, and it's been so long. Um, and you said that was the last time you guys were good. I was so young, I forget. How would you guys do in the tournament that year? We'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, I got to – dude, that team was so good. And That showed, team was really good. They showed, yeah. Den, they showed Denman highlights, obviously, in Columbia from that year. That game was electric. Um, he was unbelievable. Kansas City kid, Michael Dixon, too. Um, Ratliff was a monster down low. I'm not trying to bring up bad memories, but I loved that Mizzou team, and I hate Mizzou. You had the Pressy brothers. Oh, Steve Moore was a freaking – Steve Moore, Jesus. Moose. That dude, oh, man. They were really kid. good, and I really wanted KU Mizzou Big 12 championship that year. We ended up losing to Baylor, but ooh, the game at the Fieldhouse was – I mean, you couldn't have scripted two better games that year. You literally couldn't. Right. KU, was was the game. KU was up late. Denman hit two clutch threes, whatever he did, and then – um, in Lawrence, Thomas Robinson with the cleanest block in the history of the bas- history of the sport. Loudest, I mean that I, I would kill. I tried to go to that game so badly, but that was amazing. Um, I, I will say this: while while you mentioned that block, we can all agree that was probably a foul, right? But I think during the game, the, the I'm Columbia a big... miss calls the one like I, I think it ended up we both got one. And that's probably how it should have been. But there were, I think it was either Tyshawn or T-Rob that they called a block on him at like the top of the key or they called a charge when it should have been a block. I can't remember exactly. There were a handful of calls late. KU blew a big lead. At the end of the day, it's, both teams probably should have won one of those games. So it, it ended up being fine. But I just want to make it public and set we for a Missouri smoked. fan that, yeah, Mizzou got fucked in Allen, but KU got fucked at Columbia. That's probably fair to say. We okay. were getting smoked at Allen. I've never really seen that in my life. That game. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make Tucker cry. We that game, this. man. <laughs> uh, and then you brought up the tournament, dude. Golly, I thought that we were friends. That team was so good. Uh, they, were, they were really good. Um, and that was kind of what was so frustrating about it, right? Um, is that that was probably Mizzou's best shot to get to. Probably maybe a Final Four. I don't know. Um Sure, we could say Final Four. It's ten years ago, so Mizzou probably the best shot. Mizzou goes to those a lot, so it's like a frequent thing. Yeah, I so, mean, we're used to it at this point. Um, but no, but I, yeah. I, go ahead. Sorry, I was just this weekend. I've I've said it um, many times. I think it's a fascinating matchup because Mizzou can score. We haven't even talked about KU um, since before the Bahamas. Bahamas, they went to. They played a pretty solid NC State team, beat them. Wisconsin, we blew a lead, went to overtime, somehow tied the game. We should have lost. Zach Clements was out of bounds when he threw the pass to McCuller and then got exposed against um, Tennessee, a great team, great defensively, and that has me worried about this offense. But then they come home, um, Seton Hall, nine-point favorite. They pumped them. Kevin McCuller looked great. Dewan is great every game. I love him. I think our bigs are coming along. Um Ernest Uday's coming along a little bit. So I'm interested to see a young team go in there. And that's another thing about Mizzou. So I'm looking at their roster. They start 
I believe four seniors with Hodge, um, Honor, Carter, and then Kobe Brown. So they start four seniors and a junior. Um, so they're they get their veteran led team. KU has some young guys, Grady Dick, who I think he's kind of shied away in some bigger games, Tennessee. So I think from a veteran standpoint, it's interesting. I think they match up height wise. Your tallest guy's six seven. Ours is KJ. He's like six seven, six eight, maybe. And then yeah, it feels you, generous. You guys play quick. You can score. I worry about us scoring some games. Jalen obviously can score, but I worry about it. But then you guys aren't good defensively, so maybe we'll be able to score. And a team like SEMO scores 89, so maybe KU can score 80-plus. 80, um, 80 I don't see why not, especially since we'll probably end up playing quick since you guys do. But, AB, do you have a total on that game from Ken Palm at least? I, I didn't look it up. I, I think it was 80-77. to 77. So what is that? 140-157. Yeah, so that's a high, it's a high total for college basketball. Yeah, yeah. But both teams scoring eighty. I think Mizzou wins. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I do too. I'm not convinced. I, I just because this team hasn't played anyone who's worth a worth a crap. I wanna, um, I wanna ask you this yeah. though. Just it's not a Mizzou pod, but for Mizzou fans listening, I wanna ask you what your expectations are right this second for the season. And what they would do for your expectations and other Mizzou fans' expectations if they beat KU, a top ten team. I think that I'm probably not. I, I'm naturally pessimistic, right? So I don't want to get my hopes up. Um, I don't want to be hurt by Mizzou like I have so many times before by getting excited, uh, like Michael Porter Jr. So I think that that kind of tempers it a little bit. And I thought that if we, I think I still think that if Mizzou makes the tournament, regardless of the seed, it's a success. Um, just because of how catastrophically bad bad shape this program was in, if Dennis can turn it around and become a uh, become a tournament team, I almost said bowl eligible team. Mm-hmm. If they can turn into a, a tournament team year one, I think that's a huge success, regardless of how long they spend in the tournament, uh, what seed they get. I think that that's going to be big. And if you look at the SEC, I think the bottom, I would say bottom like six or seven. Uh, teams have new coaches like over half the uh, pretty close to the half the sec has is, is on a first year head coach so it's going to be really interesting to see where in the standings they they shake out um and, and especially with that that skit run of games that i told you man like I, I just keep going back to this of like this is a real it's a real gut check moment for them with ku ucf illinois kentucky arkansas that five game stretch right there Sands probably UCF. So four out of five, you're playing a top ten team. Um, it's unreal. unreal. Yeah, but you go, you go two and three in that. I bet you're as happy as can be. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think beat UCF I, I, and then get a top ten win. If I can watch Kentucky and not watch Mizzou play at a bowl game at the same time, I'd be super elated. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just from my standpoint, like if it was KU football, I guess we probably did this this year when we started five and zero. Oh. We looked forward to the schedule we looked at oklahoma state texas and who was it k-state too to end the season we had a crazy oh it was ou i don't know we had a crazy stretch but i would personally we talked ourselves into going to the big 12 championship game i think Mm -hmm. we finished second to last in the big 12 so me personally if ku was going through this rut in basketball or something or whatever and we beat a top 10 team i would convince myself just because i'm a fan that we're going to start beating everyone like if we can beat ku a top six program. Why can't we beat everyone else? Playing at home does help. I think playing in Missouri is going to help. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I'm excited for it. It's one of those games that um, I'm almost scared of, right? Because I, it seems like almost every one of the rivalry games, I can remember even like growing up watching Mizzou and KU play football at Arrowhead, right? I was always scared for those games. Um, and you like, don't want to lose. You don't, right. That's the thing is that like, I don't want to take a whole year of taking shit from these guys. Right. And like, that's, that's like what, what's at, what's close to uh, the stakes, but I don't think it's as bad anymore. Right. Is because we don't see each other all the time. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to get back to that level of where I'm scared to watch a game because I don't want these, uh, these 18 year olds to lose a basketball game for my sake. Yeah. And I don't, that's kind of where I'm at though. Is when is that ever going to happen? Like do regular yeah. season games do that for us? I don't think so. 
No, I, I do think they need they probably need to be in the same conference again for it to happen. I don't know if I don't know if for the sure. backyard brawl if Pitt West Virginia is the same since you know they the West Virginia left. I don't know if you can look at any other rivalry that hasn't sustained you know through a transition of um, of conference. I mean I don't know I don't even know Florida Florida State's like that right. I mean and they they don't play in the same conference so it's so it's tough to even say so. Man, I do, I do wish that that there was some regularity and some, and and uh, some old Big Twelve. There's times I reminisce about that old Big Twelve, man. It was so good. It was oh. so perfect. Imagine Dion in the twelve right now. My God. Man. Well, Big Twelve is going to get the four corner schools. Um, so I mean, Brett Yormark said he wanted to be in uh, a, all four times. All four, baby. Like that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> listen. Your mark's a baller. He had the bape. He had bape out there uh, for the logo uh, on Big Twelve, and that's I heard tough. some Kansas State fans behind me. Your guys are gonna love this, and they're like, "Is that is that a body wash company, a bathing ape?" And I was like, "Where am I? Like, am I dorks. in the Twilight Zone?" Absolute dorks. Yep. Also, let's let's talk about that game for a couple seconds, just because you were there. Were you? Yeah. Actively rooting for TCU out loud, where you kind of being quiet, where you keeping shit in. How you've actively bet on TCU a lot this year, so I oh, think yeah. they've become your team. Obviously, we wanted TCU just for Big Twelve stakes. Not that we hate K State at all. Um, we definitely <laughs> didn't care that they won. Right, but <laughs> right, me either. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was wearing a TCU shirt. Um, I was. Did I you was... throw this up? I did throw that up at one point. Uh, listen, I, there's just something about TCU, man. This is like, it feels like a cult, right? Because it's just like, man, and they got all kinds. Of, they got a hypno toad. They've got Sonny Dykes leaving their biggest rival, coming to coach for him, not even moving houses. They've got the wildest videos you've ever seen on the internet when they win football games. They have an incredibly likable. Uh, quarterback and Max Duggan, a dude who like didn't win the starting job, but was just like, I'm going to stick it here. You don't see that now, especially in the transfer portal. Max Duggan, that dude's a dog. He was out of breath. He was trying to, he was trying to put the team on his back. Some would say Max, Max Doggan. Sorry. (laughs) Some would say that and some would be correct um, if they did say that. But uh, uh, I think that Max should have a legitimate shot at the Heisman. Do I think he wins it? Probably not. It's probably going to be like CJ Stroud or some something dumb like that where I don't think CJ Stroud deserves it at all. Don't even think Caleb Williams deserves it. I think I really do think it's Max Duggan who deserves the Heisman. Um, but anyway, that's not what you asked me about. But Steph I think Bennett. Steady B the four, baby. Steady B four. Uh, that dude is older than me. That's wild to think about. He's the um, same age as Lamar Jackson. That is insane. I'm 24. I'm not even 25 yet, dude. Um, maybe Chiefs could draft him, and we could start beating the Bengals. Maybe, maybe he's the answer. Maybe he's the uh, the reversal, right? Because he's Georgia beating Ellis. You know, something to think about. Mm-hmm. Coach Reed, Coach Reed, call us up. Um, but no, I think I think it was a very good football game. As I, I put in air quotes, in neutral. I was cheering for TCU. I was sitting around a lot of TCU fans. They gave me Coors Banquet, so we uh, became Coors. friends quickly. I uh, had a couple cures, um, but man, as I do, I, I just love football. And that was one of those atmospheres where you're just like sitting around uh, in college football, I think is the purest form of football. Uh, some people say like high school football. I think that the NIL and stuff like that is making it more like the, more like the NFL. Right. But I, I just think that like college football is incredible. And just to be in that environment, to be, in uh in a stadium where two teams were playing that I didn't necessarily care about right like TCU lost I didn't feel anything right I was just like ah oh, that's too bad great um, game but, but it was a great game to watch a great game to just be in the presence of and it's just like one of those things you're just like man I was lucky I got to experience that hell yeah and then one more thing unless AB or Tuck you want to talk about <clears throat> anything else T- Tuck you're a TCU fan um AB Michigan fan. Oh, like Michigan football. They're playing each other in the playoff. Wanted to talk about that spread because I'm really torn on it. I want to bet on the Big 12 team, but Michigan's obviously been, they went into the big house um, or they went into, yeah, they went into Columbus. Um, shoe. Yeah, the shoe. Michigan's the big house. I'm an Pumped idiot. Them. But yeah, yeah and they killed them. They're they didn't, yeah, they, 
Blew them out in both buildings. It's all good. So I want to know where you guys are at with that game. Can TCU win? Who covers? Go ahead, AB. I don't know about who covers, man, but I just I'm trying to picture TCU playing for a national championship and I can't do it. So that's mm. you know the Ryan Reinhardt theory of just can you picture that's it? Right. No, I cannot. So Michigan's gonna win some way, somehow. Um I've got takes on the other playoff game when Tucker's done with this, by the way. I just don't want to leave that Ooh. off the table. Yeah. Um yeah. I don't I I just don't think that TCU can beat Michigan. I think Michigan's kind of one of those teams that's just like Obviously, Blake Corn being out is is tough for Michigan, mm-hmm. um, but they did just fine in the Big Ten championship. But I mean, TCU's got a better defense than Purdue does. Um, I, I think that you know they got some dogs at TCU. That game's going to be close, so I think six and a half probably isn't the right number for that. I think it's probably going to be closer than that. I do think Michigan does end up winning, um, but it's going to be that that's going to be a hell of a football game. I think it's yeah. going to be it's going to be the best one of the two uh, yeah, by no. far. I mean, with Blake Corum, Michigan recruits, they get recruits. They got athletes. Their O-line's oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Donnie Edwards ran for like 250 but, against Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, but it's like Aiden O'Connell and that offense for Purdue was moving it on Michigan's defense. So I don't know. Obviously, Michigan's defenses look great all year. I just – that game kind of made me skeptical about this. Duggan's a Heisman candidate. They have weapons all over. Quentin Johnston, Tay Barber. Um, who else do they have? They have Kendra Miller, who was one of the best running backs in the Big 12. Um Fuck. Quaid, yeah, they they're loaded with they're loaded with speed, weapons, yeah. a Heisman quarterback. So good coach too, probably win coach of the year. So yeah, I'm interested in that matchup. I, I do want to say this, baby, before you talk about uh Georgia, Ohio State, uh, because I, I another thing about like the TCU team that I think is just so interesting is they've got um Gosh, what's his name? Garrett Riley, which is yeah. Lincoln Riley's brother, as their OC, who is, I think, nominated. He's a finalist for I think the he, coordinator I think he won of the it. year. Or he won. Okay, so he yeah. won it. So I, I do think what I saw with TCU on, on Saturdays, they got into this lull of like run the ball on first down. Okay, that didn't work. Let's take a shot on second down. Then they found themselves very quickly. If Quentin, if Quentin Johnson didn't pull it down, right? Uh, you're looking at third and long. Um, so that can be a real big recipe for disaster. I think for TCU, they just kept doing that. They could not win on first down, um, which was really big for them. Uh, they could, they couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, and I think Michigan might be able to hold them to that. And, you know, Max, they, they got into that game when Max Duggan decided that he was going to, he was going to run all over the place. And that's when, that's when TCU is at their best is when, uh, Max Duggan can use his legs and, and make, make things happen, uh, for them. But dude, I'll tell you what. Quinn Johnson's a dog. I mean, watching him go up against Julius Brintz, like I was watching that matchup a lot because I was in the, you know, I'm up in the 400s. I'm a stone's throw from God. I could have a conversation with him. <laughs> so I'm like watching the all 22 up there. And I was just watching that matchup a lot of the times. Um, and he was cooking Julius Brintz like regularly. Um, and like, it wasn't, it wasn't close. And Julius Brintz, I think will be in an NFL corner. Like I think he he'll be in the NFL. So like, he's probably a late day three, maybe UDFA guy. I do think he will, will make it to the league. But like he was regularly cooking them, man. Like he, it was one of those things where like and the fumble too, where Quentin Johnson had the fumble. Brent's just like only hit the ball. It was a very weird thing after just getting absolutely toasted. So, um, yeah, it's that's gonna be a really good game. I hope it is. Um, we don't get a lot of good playoff games. I feel sure. like in general. Um, but I can tell you this much: I do not think that second game is gonna be even remotely close at all whatsoever. Is that spread still under a touchdown? Five and a half is what I see right now. What'd you say? Five and a half five, is what five I and right a half. Now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> look at so Ohio State's offense struggled three times this year. And if you look at them, there's one common theme. The defenses are physical as hell, and they're just good defenses. Notre None Dame. of those three defenses hold a torch to Georgia. When CJ Stroud has and that offense, they have to be physical, they have to win off the line. They're not getting 15 yards of space that disrupts them. And that whole offense is based on timing and just hitting a guy right away if they're physical that disrupts everything which is also kind of why i think cj stroud might stink in the nfl uh but that's a whole different conversation most of the teams do i like that yeah notre dame first game of the year they scored 21 points northwestern another physical team but they stink northwestern they scored 21 points ohio state did and then michigan they scored 23 points and just got manhandled in the second half three points in the second half by the way and george is obviously gonna score George is like a pro defense dude, and they're just – they're so good. To me, God, I just – I think Georgia wins that game by like 21 to 24, something that I, I do not think it's going to be competitive at all. 
Brayden, you talk about like Coach Sonny Dykes for Coach of the Year, which like I would fully get behind. What Kirby Smart has done with this Georgia team after losing 13 starters, incredible. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. I didn't I really think-, think about it like that just because they they announced the finals yesterday and someone was like Kirby Smart question mark with a bunch of clown emojis, but obviously they won the national championship, but they obviously lost a ton. That defense was loaded with talent. Oh my gosh. And I want to say it was something like nine of 11 of their defensive starters got drafted yeah. and the other two came back or something stupid like that. Yeah, like they Jordan, legitimately had a pro defense last year. Jordan Davis, Lewis seen Quay Walker. They had the, yeah, they had the number one overall pick. Like they were, that defense was unbelievable. And then they're just back this year. Obviously Bennett's back. Um, I think he's a Heisman finalist. I don't, is he a Heisman finalist? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's obviously solid. He's not world-breaking. But, yeah, they're going to generate points from their defense. Their offense is going to be fine. Brock Bowers, that tight end, is a fucking monster. Pair him with Travis Kelsey in Kansas City. I was about City. to say, man, get him, in some, get him in some red and gold. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Can you imagine, so though, good. if we go for, if we did go from Kelsey to him? And, <sighs> I mean, Bowers is undeniably going to be good. I'd love that. Um, I'm looking at the spreads on DraftKings now. I was looking at the Action Network, what they had. and I knew uh, we'd they, get 30 minutes, boys. Yep, we did it. Only 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> Michigan and TCU is an eight-point eight spread uh, with Michigan yeah. favored by eight. And the Ohio State-Georgia is six and a half in that favor of Georgia. So, like, that but is – That's why I was a little torn on the TCU one, though, is – I love Michigan. I think they're awesome, but do they win by two scores? I mean, TCU has been doubted by Vegas every single week. They go to Texas. They're plus seven. Um, there's been a ton of lines this year. The Baylor one was weird, even though they didn't even end up covering. Everyone was on TCU because they thought it was weird, which Vegas loves doing that, and they win. So their spreads throw me off. Vegas' spreads on TCU. So I feel like Vegas kind of undervalues them or doesn't think they're that good, but they end up hanging with everyone. Obviously, they were undefeated, and – Got, it took a goal line stand to beat them in the Big 12 championship in Arlington. So I don't know how I feel about that game. Um, I think TCU's offense is electric. Heisman finalist Quentin Johnston, Kendra Miller, all those dudes. Their defense isn't terrible. So I think they'll be able to move it on them, and maybe they can string together some stops. So I'm going to be cheering for TCU, but I don't know where I stand betting-wise. I'm thinking TCU with the points, and then AB has me all in on the dogs, Georgia Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Kirby and his visor. Georgia's minus two sixty money line, so you would get a better value if you took the points. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Just, just so you know. Um, <laughs> Tease them, TCU and yeah. Georgia. Oh, you could t- listen. It's not a bad one. You got you get, me. T- you get TCU over fourteen. Oh my god. Or Georgia, Ooh. Georgia money line. Yeah, it's Georgia money line. TCU, TCU money line. Oh god. TCU money line two fifty five right now on the on our friends at like, DraftKings Sportsbook. We love just DK. imagine TCU playing at SoFi Stadium. That's not going to happen. They're not, not going to the championship. I agree. Yeah, I. I they just listen. it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, as much as I love the frogs, it's one of those things. Like in twenty fourteen too, was that the Andy Dalton year, um, where they wanted to be in the BCS national championship but like didn't. Um, yeah, it's just they, another. They won by forty in the last week. And, and they got dumped the down. Was it Boyk? <laughs> was Boyk in their quarterback? Oh, I gotta look this up now. Sorry, we're gonna, it, I think we're gonna delay this, this, this podcast even longer. This no, was they were, post, this they was were, post Andy Dalton. This was, I think it was Boykin. Yeah, I think that's they right. They were in the playoff, literally the rankings going in the last week, and then they played a shit team and they won by like 40, and they ended up dropping them out, which was insane because why would you rank them there before that? And then you drop them after winning by four. So why were they Ooh. up there regardless? Am I right? So they were, yeah. So they played Iowa State to end the yeah. season. And I they beat them fifty-five to three. Drop well, out. This was well, pre. Did, was that? Did they play? I forgot how the Big Twelve did this. When they didn't have a conference championship, did they go full slate on that conference championship weekend, or did TCU have that week off? They were fourth, and then Ohio State blew the doors off of Nebraska or Wisconsin or whoever, and then that was enough. While TCU sat at home, didn't play. Ohio State ends up going in and nat- naturally wins the title. So I, I do think that – so December 6th was that, that last game, and I do think that that was like the last week of the regular season, and then they had the conference championship. So I think that they had the, – the Big 12 had the week off um, of that that championship game. Yeah. They didn't end up second in the uh, 
Yeah, they ended up second in the Big 12 behind Baylor because they lost to Baylor. Um, which is that, yeah. is that the Sean Oakman Baylor team? Uh, sounds right. Sounds I very think, right. I think he's in the XFL now. Uh, I think he got drafted. I'll save my takes on him until we get off of here. That's fine. I don't want to speak out of my ass. <laughs> you guys got anything else before we go on another tangent? <laughs> no. No, I say I'm we good. wrap it up. Next episode, I'm sure we'll be talking Kansas, Arkansas, Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Um, it was great having Tuck on. He's our guy. We love him. He's great at everything he does, especially TikToks, especially drinking alcohol. Is that okay? Is that an okay plug? Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm, um, I'm of age. I'm 24. I can drink. Yeah. That's legal. <clears throat> you you killed it. We loved having Thank you on, you. talking Mizzou, dodging Kansas like the frauds they are. Um, KU Mizzou in Mizzou Arena Saturday. It's going to be a close spread. KU is a top 10 team. Mizzou can score. They play fast. Don't play much defense. It should be an electric matchup. Rock Chuck.